In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. This is my day. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. It is Monday, the sixth of February, twenty twenty three. Fifth week in ordinary time, and today we remember Saint Paul Mickey and Companions Matters. Paul Miki was born in Japan in 1565. He entered the Society of Jesus and preached the gospel with great enthusiasm and zeal. Eventually, a strong persecution started and Paul, together with 25 of his companions, including some altar savers, were seized and subjected to terrible tortures. Finally, they were crucified at Nagasaki on 5th February 1597. We'd like to pray for the church in Japan that through the intercessions of Paul Mickey and companions, that church may continue knowing Christ and that Christ may be the center of values in that part of the world. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Monica Wakiero Karanja celebrating her 60th birthday from Naivasha, Kenya, takes for us the first reading. Mr. Pop John Paul II from Gulu City in Uganda celebrating his birthday today, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Anthony Kobina Jan from Second Takoradi Diocese in Ghana. Let us pray. O oh God, strength of all the saints, who through the cross were pleased to call the martyrs Saint Paul, Mickey, and companions to life, grant we pray that by their intercession we may hold with courage even until death to the faith that we profess. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. God spoke and it was so. The beginning of the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 19. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning one day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and separated the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And there was evening, and there was morning, a second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind upon the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, 
plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, a third day. And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heavens to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, and for days and years, and let them be lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, a fourth day, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 104, verses 1 to 2a, 5 to 6, 10 and 12, 24 and 35c. The response is taken from Psalm 104, verse 31b. And the response is, May the Lord rejoice in his works. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. O oh Lord my God, how great you are, clothed in majesty and honor, wrapped in light as with, a, as with a robe. May the Lord rejoice in his works. You set the earth on its foundation, immovable from age to age. You wrapped it with the depths like a cloak. The waters too dry than the mountains. May the Lord rejoice in his way. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow in between the hills. There the birds of heaven build their nests. From the branches they sing their song. May the Lord rejoice in his way. How many are your works, O oh Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Gospel acclamation. Matthew 4, verse 23. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Jesus was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every infirmity among the people. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Mark chapter 6, verse 53 to 56. At that time, when Jesus and his disciples had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored to the shore. And when they got out of the boat, immediately the people recognized him and ran about the whole neighborhood and began to bring sea people on their pallet to any place where they heard he was. And wherever he came, in villages, cities, or country, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that he might touch even the fringe of his garment. And as many as touched it were made well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
We have started reading the book of Genesis, the first book that we have in the Bible, and it is good for us to understand what this book is all about and uh, what exactly is the message it wants to give us. Remember, we are not dealing with history here. We don't want to misunderstand the Bible. Otherwise, we'll start asking questions like, uh, what type of a fruit did Adam and Eve take? Was it an apple? Was it this? Excuse me. The writer is not interested in all that. It is good for us to know exactly what the writer wants to achieve in bringing this story of creation. And it is not one writer. It is uh, traditions, various traditions. The book of Genesis is answering to the question, how did the world come about? Where are we coming from? The word Genesis comes from a Greek word which means origin or birth. For Christians and Jews, it is the inspired story about the creation of the universe and the origin of the human race. It also explains how sin and death came into this world and how God intervened to repair the damage. Most of the book tells the story of the first ancestors of the Israelites. And this Genesis is divided into two main parts. For now, we are going to deal with the first part. The first 11 chapters are usually referred to as primordial or primeval history or even as myths. These words simply point to the fact that what is narrated here is not history in the modern sense of the word. Rather, it is an inspired theological reflection of the Israelites on those universal truths that affect all human beings, regardless of time, place, and nationality. This first part deals with the creation of the world and the story of the nations, how nations came about. And then we have the second part that gives us the origins of the people of God. Yes, we have nations and they came into being. But from those nations came the people of God. And we are going to deal with the first part up to the 17th of January, where we are going to see the inspiration given by God to people to understand how things came into being. And these inspirations were given to various traditions. These traditions are identified as Yahwehist, Eloist, Priestly and Deuteronomic traditions. These traditions came up with the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Old Testament in which the book of Genesis is found. Many people have ascribed these books to Moses, even saying Jesus quoted that Moses said these. These are books of Moses, but they are just ascribed to him. They were written by various traditions, and we see even the language that is used in these first five books. Today we are on chapter 1, verse 1 to 19, where we are seeing God creating by his word. The power of God's word to bring things into being. We are told in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep. Whenever we have an experience like this in our world, when we see darkness over the deep, when we see darkness in our world, we know that God will come through. His spirit will be over the waters to make sure that things come in place. He is the God of order. Is the God who puts things in place by the power of his word. And that's why the word of God is so powerful. You know, he saw this. And the first thing that he said was, let there be light. He understood the power of light. 
He understood that when people live in darkness, nothing can be achieved. When people are not knowledgeable, when people are ignorant about the truths and about how they should live their lives, nothing can work out. And so he says, let there be light. That's the first thing that God did. By the power of his word, he brought light into this world. And wherever he sees darkness, he's saying, let there be light. Let people know this is not how they ought to live their lives. Let there be light. He wants light to be in our world today. And he only used his word. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it separate the waters from the waters. God who has power over water, God who has power over the forces of the sea, is able to contain the force that water has. And so there is nothing that is impossible to him. And that's what this story is telling us. The God who brought things into being cannot be overcome, cannot fail to do anything when we run to him, when we seek for his help. And we see him using the power of his word in the gospel passage of today. We see him healing, healing people. And he was touching them by his word. He was allowing them even to use sacramentals, the power of sacramentals. Just touching his cloth made people well. And it is still happening today. We are made well by the sacramentals and the sacraments that we receive, especially the sacrament of the Eucharist, just allowing that sacrament to touch you with faith, you get healed. Ben in one of the Pentecostal pastors has said, there is a lot of healing in the Catholic Church because the Catholics revere the Eucharist, because the Catholics know the power there is in that Eucharist, and when they revere, when they adore that, they touch Jesus by faith, and they are healed. I'm telling you, I've received a lot of healing in that, and I've seen a lot of healing taking place. And faith is lived in reality, where people know the power of sacramentals. When I touch, when I get that holy water, when I use that rosary, when I touch that cross, The cross that is blessed in which the presence of Christ is revealed. I'm going to be well and people recover. I am telling you the experience of those people will be your experience too. When you believe in the power of these sacramentals. We give glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be. World without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Monday to you. Thanks be to God. This is my daily bread. Your very life is bread. Spoken to me and I I'm desperate for you and I This is the air I breathe.